All right, students, welcome back as we start wrapping up this introduction course to Cisco Packet Tracer. Hopefully you are really enjoying it. I know a lot of it's just very basic introduction material, but hey, that is what people have asked for, and that is what I'm delivering. You guys wanted a good, complete overview on how to really work within Cisco Packet Tracer before you started diving into more complex labs, just so you have an easier time navigating around those labs and doing different features and performing different functions within Packet Tracer itself for your network training and the topologies you are building. Right, so in this lecture or section specifically, I kind of want to go over a little bit about Internet of Things for those of you that are interested or those of you that are in the securities industry. Um, some of you might just have an interest in it and might want to learn a little bit about it and play around with it. You know, it doesn't hurt. Knowledge is king and, you know, <laughs> knowledge is key in the industry these days. So the more you know, the better off you'll be anyway. So what we're going to do is we're just going to scroll down our labs just like so. And we're going to set up a lab that we're going to build for uh, the Internet of Things. And it's going to be a very, very simple lab. It's going to be nothing crazy or complex. But what we're essentially going to do is we're going to grab a switch. And it can just be any switch. I could just use the 2960 switch. And then we're also going to go ahead and click the end devices. I'm going to click the home icon. And I'm going to grab a computer, or I'm sorry, a, a webcam. We can set the webcam up wherever we want. Maybe we want to set it up here. We're also going to highlight the motion detection, which is going to be this guy right here. And I'll move the switch over. Like I said, I just like to make things neat. And the only other thing we need is a server. So I'm going to go back to end devices here, click generic, and just drop it in here. Now we can connect these guys, okay? That's not going to be a problem. And to connect these, all we got to do is just use a standard straight through Ethernet cable. So I'm going to go from the server to the switch. And in this particular video, I really don't care which interfaces you use because this is just for demonstration purposes. We're not connecting it to a router or anything of that nature. But I'm also going to just connect the switch to whatever you want, to the motion detector, and as well as the switch to the webcam. So what we're going to end up doing here is we're going to configure this to communicate to a server, a specific web application on the server, and then set up actions so if the motion detection is tripped so to trip motion on packet tracer what you got to do is hold down the alt key and wave it back and forth now notice it's not doing much right now because we haven't configured anything on it the camera in the same sense is you know anytime you want to trigger an internet of things device like right now i'm just waving my mouse over the motion you don't see anything happening but if i hold down the alt key and go over it we have motion so that's just something to keep in mind. But the camera is not doing anything. So we're going to set this up kind of like how real world scenarios would be, where if you have a door in your office in a card access system and someone walks up to that door, there's a couple things that we could do for that camera so we can see who's going into that camera. One, as soon as that card swipe is red, the camera is going to either pan and tilt and zoom to that card reader to see who's going in or it's just going to call to action. It's just, as soon as that card reader is red, the camera is going to look at it so it can see who's going in. But maybe you don't have that sophisticated of a card access system, or maybe you don't have a card access system at all. But you still want to monitor who's going in certain doors, or you know, this could be used anywhere. Maybe it's a hallway, you know, the back staircase inside of your building, and you want to know who's going up and down the stairs all day, kind of hiding from typical eyes, and you know, all around the rest of the building. Well, we could set it up to motion. So as soon as someone walks past this motion, it calls action to the camera to start recording, and it records to the server. This is extremely useful for places that are not heavily traveled because obviously video needs to be recorded to a DVR. And the more video, if you know, if we're recording 24-7, that's eating up a lot of resources on that di the digital video recorder and taking up space that we don't necessarily need unless there's actually something happening over there. So we would usually set up a motion detection to a camera in somewhere that's not heavily traveled, but we still need to monitor it. Now, pay mind to that most newer um, IP cameras these days that are available, uh, like the Panasonic, some of the um, other ones, I forget some of the other names, to be honest with you, but they have motion detection built right in. So you would actually configure a lot of this built right in. But for home networks, that's not always the case. So if you buy, you know, a couple, maybe it's like a four or six camera kit from I don't know, let's say uh, Sam's Club here in the United States, wherever, Best Buy. Not all of those are going to be so sophisticated as some of the uh, enterprise level cameras. 
So you could actually connect them to motion detectors. Now also pay mind too that a lot of those are also wireless, so they'd all be wirelessly or Bluetooth connecting to like a central little hub or something within that house. So with that said, this is what we're gonna create. And then the next lecture, we'll actually start configuring these and seeing how we can get them communicating. All right guys, I'll see you there.